Hello everyone, Professor Toy Box here along with Sorcerer's Apprentice Mickey, and we're back in my Fantasia Toy Box for another episode of Toy Box Tutorials. Today we're going to start a brand new mission for Mickey, now that he's saved the villagers over there from the brooms. I want to add a few side quests. These quests will only be available after Mickey's saved the townspeople, and they won't be part of the main story, but they'll give the player some different things to do. And I'm eager to take a little break from the brooms, so I'm going to put the main story on the back burner for right now. The first side quest involves a farmer who needs some help rounding up his sheep. The sheep got out during the confusion in town, and he needs Mickey's help to find them all. So this is what we're going to work on for the next couple of weeks, and that brings us to our topic for today, critters. There's a couple of different ways to add critters to your toy box. The first way is with the critters drawer, and you can put these directly into your toy box. So I'll go ahead and do that right now for just one of these as we take a look at him. And I'm going to come into spark mode and open up the logic menu for him. And you'll note there's only one option here, and that's the new actor connection. And if we were to select that and go find one of our townspeople and select him, I can get to him. There we go. You'll note there's only one option, and that's follower. And I'm going to cancel out of this, because we've seen this before with the townspeople and the enemies. Um, the follower option doesn't seem to work, and I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to do. So that's all you can really do with them from a logic connection standpoint. Uh, you can pick them up and... Uh, and maybe we'll go ahead and just do that and play around with him a little bit before I delete him. So as you approach him, he turns and runs from you. So it makes chasing them a little bit uh, tricky. <laughs> Trying to catch him is a challenge. Hey, get back here, you. Where'd you go? There we go. So we can pick him up, and you can drop him, you can throw him. Very similar to the townspeople. And... Uh, so we'll go ahead and just set him down for right now. And that's really about it. Uh, as you saw, the logic menu is pretty empty. There's no properties to set. There's no uh, behaviors you can put on them, so you can't really make them do anything. Uh, the only behavior they have is when you approach, they run away. Um, the other way to put them in your toy box is with a friend generator. And uh, we're going to do that um, here in a moment. But uh, we'll go ahead and get started on our mission for right now. And first thing we need to do is clear out a space for the farm. And I'm going to put that over here. So I'm going to clean out these uh, tree clusters here. And we'll put the farm down right in here. And I'm going to come up to building sets group. Four, and we'll put down this little building and I'll put it back over here a little bit out of the way so that you can uh, get around the building a bit. That should be good enough. And throw a roof on it. There we go. So now we have the makings of a farm and I'll build this out a little bit more as we go along. The next thing we're going to need is a mission giver. And uh, so we'll find a townsperson here. It might have been faster if I went the other way. And I'm going to use this little uh, old <laughs> funny looking guy here. So I'll drop him down and open the logic menu and get down to the properties. And I'm going to go ahead and just make him sleep for a second here just so he doesn't wander off on me. What I really want him to do is stand still initially. There we go. And that'll be the farmer who needs our help. And I'm going to go ahead and set him up as a mission giver next. We did this once before for the uh, townsperson over there at the entrance to town, but we did that over the course of three weeks. And so uh, we'll go ahead and do this one more time, and you can see how it all goes together in one shot. So I'm going to drop a radar marker and a text displayer and we need a dynamic trigger. We'll go ahead and hook the radar marker up first. 
So we come down to the properties and the beacon type, I'm going to leave that as a blue exclamation point. As I mentioned, this quest is going to be a side quest and not part of the main story. And in the playsets, uh, the yellow beacons are for the main story, the blue are for side quests. So we'll leave that as a blue exclamation point. The beacon location needs to be the connected actor, which will be our townsperson. And I'm going to leave it off for right now. And we'll go ahead and connect up this uh, radar marker to our little townsperson over here. There we go. Next, we'll hook up the dynamic trigger. So, new actor connection. <laughs> These guys are so hard to select. There we are. And we'll go ahead and set the properties for that. So, the target is going to be the connected actor. And the trigger distance, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller than the one in town that we did before. I'm going to set that to 4, so you'll have to be much closer to him. And then the text displayer, we'll set the properties on that. And I'm going to set the text duration to 4, and the text style to proposal. And all players can accept or reject it. So those are the three toys that we need for our mission giver. And now we'll go ahead and hook those up. So the dynamic trigger again creates a little area of interest around him. And if we open the logic menu for that and do a new logic connection, when entered by player any, we're going to come over to our text displayer and we're going to go down to the missions drawer. And he's going to say, will you help me? And on the text displayer, new logic connection, when the text proposal is accepted, we'll come over to our radar marker and deactivate that. And also on the text displayer, when the text proposal is accepted, we'll turn off the dynamic trigger so that we don't keep asking that question. So there we go. There's our mission giver. And I'm going to go ahead and just slide this over to be next to those others. Now the mission giver, I only want to be active after the main storyline is finished. and uh, Or the mission in town, which is part of the main storyline. So as we've noted before, when the counter reaches zero is when this mission is over in town. And I've moved all the creativitoys down below the terrain to get them out of the way. And so if we drop back down here underneath the terrain there's our counter so we'll open the logic menu and do a new logic connection when zero is reached and that mission is over in addition to everything it does to wrap up this mission in town we're going to come over here and turn on the radar marker for this guy we'll activate that and we also need to turn on the dynamic trigger. And right now I technically don't need to do that, but before I'm done I will, so I'm going to go do that now. So new logic connection when zero is reached. We'll come back up and turn on the dynamic trigger. And those two toys will activate this mission giver. Whoa! <laughs> Dragons firing at us. Okay, now in order to test any of this out before we go any further, um, Mickey's going to come into the toy box, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this little starting pad around because I'd like him facing the town initially. So as he comes into the toy box, he's going to see the yellow beacon over here, and player will hopefully run over the bridge and do this main quest in town first. But I don't want to keep doing that for the for every video in the series as I'm trying to build other quests. So I'm going to set up a little button over here that we can use to simulate having finished the main quest. So I'm going to drop this down. And there's a few things we need to do to make that happen. So on the button, new logic connection when pressed, when we run through this main quest, 
there's a trigger area, or a dynamic trigger rather, in town that will set off uh, everything and put it in motion. So as we cross the bridge, that will, the player's going to enter the area around this dynamic trigger, and that will generate townspeople and enemies, and we want to make sure this is turned off, because as we play through the main quest, and this first story in the main quest, or this first quest in the main story, sorry, um, during the process of that, that'll turn that off. So we'll go ahead and do that. The other dynamic trigger that kicks off the main story and the main quest is the dynamic trigger for the mission giver here. And I'd set those controls up about here, so we'll drop those down. Drop down here and turn off that dynamic trigger as well. And one more thing. We'll go ahead and turn off the radar marker for him. Okay, so if we were to go through and play the mission, we would talk to him, the radar marker would go off of him, and his dynamic trigger would turn off. We enter the town, the enemies and townspeople generate, and the dynamic trigger that kicked all that would go off. And then we play through the mission until it's finished. And so what we've done with this button is bypass all of that and just directly turn off the radar marker and the two dynamic triggers. The other thing that happens that we just hooked up when the mission is over, it's going to turn on our new mission giver over there. And so that's the other thing this button needs to do because we're not going to play through the main quest. So new logic connection when pressed. We're going to come over here to our new mission giver and turn that on. And again, I want to turn on that dynamic trigger as well. Initially, when we come into the toy box, I want that dynamic trigger to be inactive. And that way, if we happen to wander over here before we finish the first main quest in town, we won't trigger this guy's behavior. So I'm going to want this off. Uh, whoops. Back down here, I meant to. Action button should have turned that on. I want it off by default. And uh, right now it's on by default. And I'm going to address that in a future video here in a couple of weeks. But for right now, I'm going to assume that is off because that's the state that I want it to be when we're all done. So the button. As we come into the toy box. So Minky shows up on the pad as we load the toy box and here we are and there's the main quest in town and the start of the main storyline but I don't want to do that. I want to go test my new thing so as I come over here and push the button that deactivates that quest and simulates having finished it and also turns on this guy. So now we have a button that will bypass temporarily that main first uh, quest in the main storyline. And again, this is just a temporary button because I don't want to run through that first quest every time. So now we've got our mission giver and he's all set and ready to go. And if we were to run up to him, we can go ahead and accept his proposal. The next stage we need to do is go ahead and put the critters in. And these will be the sheep that we need to save. And for that, we're going to use the friend generator. And since I have three sheep, I'm going to need three friend generators. And so, coming back to the text displayer, a new logic connection. When the text proposal is accepted, we want to come over to the first friend generator. And I want to generate a sheep. And so we come down here. There's a critters category, and I believe these are all the critters. There might be one or two missing. I haven't done a full inventory on it. But of course, the one we need is all the way at the bottom of the list. So I gotta scroll all the way down to get to my sheep. There we go. And I don't really want the sheep to show up at this location. 
So I'm going to drop down a few locators that we can connect up to these guys. So we'll put one over here. We'll put one over here. And we'll put another one over here. So I'm going to connect up this first one with a new locator connection. And we'll connect to that locator. And for this one, new locator, we'll connect to this guy. And our third one, we'll connect to this one. And normally I don't like to use the friend generator, but the friendly wave generator doesn't seem to let you put many critters in. I only saw two or three in the list, <clears throat> but the friend generator allows you uh, to put in any critter you want. And so that's why we need to do that. And I could just drop the critters in directly out of the critters drawer, but um, then they would always be here and I don't want to take up all the resources. Uh, for the toy box with critters that are only here for one side quest that the player may or may not do. So now that we've hooked up the locators, we'll go ahead and hook up the other two friend generators. So on text proposal accepted, we'll come over to this one, come down to the critters category, and go all the way to the bottom to find the sheep. It's really too bad that you can't scroll up and wrap around to the bottom of the list. That would have been really handy because some of these lists are really long. There we go. And one more. Whoops, not that. Cancel. You get in a hurry and <laughs> you pick the wrong thing. New logic connection. Text proposal accepted. There we go. And come to this generator, go to the critters category, and all the way to the bottom. La 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 la. Exciting video, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now we have our three sheep that will generate. And it'd be nice to have a radar marker on them. So I'm going to go ahead and drop down another radar marker. Actually, three. One for each of these. And I'll move all these out of the way when I'm done. So for the beacon type, we're going to make this a blue arrow. And we want it on the connected actor. And it's off by default. And you know, I'm kind of curious if we need three of these. Let's just find out, shall we? So we'll do a new actor connection. Actor. Let's see what happens. Because I've never done this or even thought of doing this until now. And we'll connect this one up to all three of these. And we'll see what happens. If it doesn't work, I can always delete the other two connections and hook these guys up. So on the text proposal accepted, new logic connection, text proposal accepted, we want to come over to our radar marker and activate it. So we're going to generate all three sheep and we're going to see if this one radar marker will put a radar marker on all three of those sheep. And uh, just because I may want to test this multiple times, let's go ahead and put this button. New logic connection when pressed. I'm going to come over here to... I'm going to use this as a reset button also for these. So we'll go ahead and remove all of the sheep that that one generated. And we'll do that with the other two as well. And this way that button will not only bypass 
the first quest in the main storyline. But it'll also set up that side quest. And if we start testing that and need to reset it, this button will help us do that. Gotta kill two birds with one stone. There we are. That'll remove the sheep. Because if this doesn't work, and I have to use three radar markers, then I'm going to need this button to work and reset the entire quest. So I've cleared all three of the sheep, and the last thing I want to do is go ahead and turn that back off. Okay. So, let's go ahead and test. So I've already pushed the button, and that has activated this uh, guy over here. So we'll go ahead and run up and see what happens. So he says, will you help me? And we'll say continue. And we've got <laughs> three sheep, each with a radar marker on it. Cool. And he takes off, and now we got to go chase him down and pick him up. And, uh-oh, now where do I take him? <laughs> it's looking pretty good so far, but we need a place to put the sheep once we catch him. Uh, we could set up a trigger area, like we did over there in town and put that inside of a fenced area. But uh, yeah, we've already done that once, and there's actually another way to do that, and I'm gonna save that for next time. Until then, I wanna thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it helpful, or at least learned something from it. And thank you to all of my subscribers and followers. You guys are the best. If you're not a subscriber or follower yet, all you need to do is sign up on my blog or subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you'll never miss a new episode or any of my future Disney Infinity projects. That's all from me today. I'll see you next time.